Hey, welcome back, colleagues and friends. It's Mike Oaks from the Read Write Mike podcast. Welcome back. It's been a while, hasn't it? You know, I don't think we've had a, a recording for uh, a podcast episode for a month or two. It's a busy time of year, launching the school year. And I have to apologize. I got out of practice. I was doing a podcast a week for a while there. And I got to practice, but I'm ready to get back in it. Um, and, you know, ready to open up to new topics, things, things to talk about, things to think about together. Um, I do want to talk uh, more about word love and the vocabulary curriculum today. And in today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> critiques of word love, right? And I think it's good to, to sort of face critiques to people. And when I say critiques, feedback, you know, compliments that 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 suggest that things could be even better and you know critiques that may be positive or negative and i think that's okay i think in any liberal society we you know one's ideas and one's work should sort of like be tested to see if it's any good if it can be like put up um as, as something that's good for for knowledge and uh, good to know good to have so i just want to address some of those things today um, I want to talk about the ones that I that I believe personally are legit and I, you know, things that I can do about them or that can be done about them. And then ones that I think that are not accurate, inaccurate, um, or that can be uh, pushed back against a little bit. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit spicy. Um, it'll be fun though. Um, so first I want to start with some real legit critiques, criticism, feedback that I grapple with, that I think about that I'm like, yeah, this is... This is something that I, you know, really need to think about, and you know, maybe we, you, need to think about as you you conduct this curriculum. Um, so some of these include it's really tied to the read alouds that are in the units of study. Yeah, I get that. That that makes a lot of sense, and that was its intent. That's that was actually why, but it doesn't travel very well if you don't teach from reading units of study, or if you don't use the particular read aloud for the unit of study. And so, you know, my answer to that is, is a few things. One of them is stay tuned. I'm going to, you know, keep coming out with vocabulary materials that aren't going to be tied specifically to particular read alouds for a particular curriculum. So A, B, we've talked about in previous episodes, I think in the earlier episodes, frequently asked questions that um, you can always apply the concept of the word to whatever book you're teaching, right? So if the, like I always say, if um, say a word is envy, but the word envy does not appear in a book that you're reading, but a sense of jealousy does, then you can teach the word envy. Like if a concept of a word appears, you can teach the word. So you could look at the lists of words and say, does the concept of this word appear? Um, and then also related to this is that it's the, the units are third, fourth, and fifth grade, right? And so I've had many, 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 many middle school teachers and primary teachers who have said, Mike, I wish, you know, this was also available uh, for other grades. And, you know, there's nothing I can really say about that other than, um, you know, <laughs> perhaps it will happen. I don't know. Um, but also that if you take a look at and you read the curriculum, you can kind of get a sense of how it goes. And, and a, a lot of the, you know, the feedback that I've gotten is people have realized that if there's something that's not perfect, with what I've created that they can always create their own. And many people who have, you know, once they've gotten a sense of how the units go, have started creating their units, which I think is lovely, which is this idea that I can give you fish and teach you how to fish at the same time. So I've had middle school teachers who have started to develop their own, you know, word love curriculum, parents, teachers, um, who have all contacted me and said, you know, after we've done one, we, we, I get how it goes and I can kind of transfer it over. Um, so I think those are really real things. I think another fair feedback is the choice of words. You know, you know who, it's a good, always a good question. Ask who's choosing words. Moi, you know, yours truly. And, you know, that's up for debate. Should one person be choosing all the words? You know, part of my answer to that is, well, somebody has to choose the words and people want vocabulary and somebody's got to do it. And I'm of the mind that something's not getting done. I'll do it. That's just how I sort of, that's, that's sort of my MO is like, I, I think what needs to be done in the world, if somebody's not doing it, can I do it? And so I act, I, I, I act. And so, yeah, looking back, could, 
could there be more incorporation of others into that process, which I'm starting to do now with the fantasy words, they've been crowdsourced among the word love community. The academic vocabulary is now crowdsourced among the word love community. You may have gotten an email asking you to sort of vote for academic vocabulary that you think should go into those units. So that is really heartening because oftentimes I get better insight from you from colleagues as to what words are pr preferable and what are not. I will say this, most of the time we agree and like, we're like, yeah, these are great words and we should use these words. There are some times where I think a word is good and you, the word love community are like, we, we don't think that one's that as great. And that's good for me to know because why would I be putting out words that people are like, meh, that's not a great word. And then sometimes people surprise me with, a, with words that they think are interesting and good for kids to learn. And I say, you know, I didn't think of it that way and that could go on the list, but I would say moreover, I mean, 90% we are in agreement, but it's always good to have other people sort of check in with that. So I appreciate that. I remember from the pilots last year, there was a lot of feedback on assessment and I think that's legit. Part of it is I think people have their own, each of you has your own way to think about like, what are the ways that kids can show what they know? So what I did was, is I revised and I added another kind of assessment. So you have two options of assessment. You know, I can't please everybody all the time. And so you could do the assessment that you like, or you prefer. I gave two options. And I think that's, I think that's fair. If, if you feel like there's a better way that the assessment could go, go ahead and make it. Um, and let me know. Um, maybe it's, it is better. We could incorporate it as well. But I just remember from the pilot feedback, everybody had a different view on assessment. I couldn't even, I couldn't even grasp a pattern of what people sort of liked and preferred. Um, I think it's fair to, you know, to be curious about, could we get more application into writing because we want kids to have their expressive vocabulary in, in speech, but also in writing. Fair, fair enough. I think part of the reason that writing isn't the hugest part of word love is because well, talking is a little bit more scaffolded, a little bit more easier. It's a little bit briefer. And the goal of word love is for it to be brief. So it's not taking up too much time in your day. Could there be more places where kids can apply it to writing? Yeah. Again, I think that's fair critique. Um, I will say all the research that I've read around vocabulary and writing, though, is this. It's learn a word deeply, you know, get kids to learn words deeply, and then just invite and ask and tell them to use it in their writing. And they will. And that's what a lot of pilots have told me too, that kids are just, they're, they are just using it in their writing. And so once it, once you know something deeply, you can apply it. It can be in your expressive vocabulary. So the invitation would be for you to just, you know, invite kids to use it in writing workshop into their responses. And, you know, it could be a part of the assessment that you like or something. And yeah, those are some of the things that I think are fair. And there might be others. Those have come to my mind that I think are really fair critiques of word love is that it's tied to the units of study books or not necessarily the units, but the read aloud books. It's through only three to five. Um, the choice of words is primarily coming from me. Um, now I'm crowdsourcing more assessment. There's so many varieties and could there be more with writing? There's a, there could be other areas. I mean, maybe there could be more with word parts, but uh, that would be another venture to get into with prefixes and roots. Right now I'm just focusing on learning individual words. Now I'm going to get into some um, feedback and critiques that I would I would speak against a little bit, either because I disagree or because I believe it's untrue. <laughs> so let's roll up our sleeves and get started. So one feedback that I heard uh, about word love is that it's traditional. It's traditional vocabulary instruction, but said in a way that, that the traditional had a sort of a negative connotation. You, you know, when you tell you when you're speaking to colleagues, when they say, when some say traditional, they mean like, not as good, like old fashioned or bad, you know, you know, sort of like that was the way we used to do things. And I would say, the, the best thing I could think of is like, I know, I know, this is sort of like, grandiose, but that would be like, to call word love, traditional, I would say would be say to call like, Newton's laws of physics, traditional or you know Einstein's equation e equals mc squared wow that's pretty traditional like these these are the traditions upon which we rest now that's grandiose I, I, I'll I will admit it but what I mean by that is that vocabulary by definition is the meaning of words and so one way to learn 
vocabulary is to learn the meanings of words, <laughs> individual words, right? And so that seems like a it, that seems like a ridiculous claim. Like it's traditional. Like I would crack open any book length, you know, study, any book length um, synthesis, any any book on vocabulary in education, and you won't see anybody who's not talking about teaching individual words. It is actually essential, and frankly, it's what most people think when they think of vocabulary. And I'll say it again. The only reason I came up with word love is because it is parts that are missing from particular curricula that you may be teaching. Um, it's a significant gap. And so I'm providing that. On the other hand, with the, the traditional critique, I would say, well, what's so what's what's wrong with traditional? Why is that a bad connotation? I think you can't innovate if you're not innovating from something that came from before. Otherwise, it's not innovation. Innovation doesn't come from thin air. Innovation comes from that which came before and improves it. And so that's how I view it. And like, and so maybe it is traditional and that's a good thing. And it's being made better and made anew and made fresh. That is how you make progress. And that's how you, you get, get things to be better. So I would push back on the traditional claim or embrace it and say, yes, it's traditional and it's an innovation on a very good tradition. All right. So that's one critique that I would speak to. Another one that I heard, which was just bizarre is that word love doesn't have a community of practice around it. And part of me, I'm trying not to, you know, have a sense of risibility with this one, but this one is just patently, patently untrue. Um, the community, let me talk to you about the community of practice around word love. My goodness, this has started around 2013 in my conversations with teachers at schools where I staff developed. This community of practice started in 2014, 15, 16, when I brought my ideas to my colleagues at the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project and shared with them some of my first things that I was discovering and realizing and learning for myself. Um, this community of feedback occurred in 2017, 18, 19 and 20 or 18 through 20 when I was in a writing club, many of which are my colleagues at the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project, where I submitted for um, our, our writing group, the early drafts of word love for feedback. Um, this community of practice comes from when I have showed this work uh, for feedback from leaders in organizations I work for and in publishing companies um, and gotten feedback on what it could look like and what it could possibly be. This community of practice comes from last year when we had dozens, dozens of pilots in the 2020-21 school year who piloted each word love um, curriculum and gave feedback on it. This community of practice is you. We have nearly 3,000 participants um, who have joined us who are doing this work across the country, across the globe. And this is quite a large community of practice and we're growing. So anytime you hear that there may not be a community of practice around word love, patently false. We've been working together on this um, for goodness, seven, eight years now. And it has been quite a lovely, lovely ride. A lovely, it's been really great to be a part of. So I'm very grateful for you. Um, another critique that, you know, I, I speak to this frequently. And I think I put this, I actually should probably put this in the, it's a pretty fair critique actually, um, but I'm gonna speak to it again. This idea that when you teach the words, like half the kid to the whole class, half the kids already know the words. Right. And I'm sure if you've done some word love, you realize, OK, maybe there's some words here where more kids kind of know the words more or less. And what I usually say back to this is. That if that's true, are you in especially if you're introducing the words and they have pictures that go with them, <laughs> right, maybe maybe at the beginning of Ben's you introduce the words with no pictures, right, because the pictures are kind of a help and a reminder. But um, one thing I will say is that. Are, if these, if it's true that kids know the words, my next question is, is, are you hearing kids say these words in their conversations? Are you seeing them write these words in their writing? If the answer is no, then I maintain still that that word is a candidate to teach because the goal is not for it to just be a word that they know in their receptive vocabulary that they can hear and understand and read and understand. 
this goal of it learning individual words is for your expressive vocabulary that you can say it in your speech frequently and regularly that you can put it into your writing and you can use it well that you can use it figuratively or put it in as a joke right but to learn it deeply again the point of learning individual words is to learn some words deeply that's the goal if you want to learn a lot of words, albeit maybe at a more shallow level in your receptive vocabulary, then as I've said before, then the thing you want to work on is wide reading across genres, right? And so the idea that, you know, half the kids know half the words or whatever, I, I do push back on. And if that is true, that the kids are, you know, in your classes, they are using them in their speech and in their writing, write to me and I'll give out some feedback forms probably later on at some point and say, you know, Mike, this, this word probably doesn't need to be in the list. And it's probably a handful of words, you know, and I think some units are better than others um, when it comes to this. But again, that's why I'm crowdsourcing a lot of the, the word lists as well. Um, so again, when it says like half the kids know the words, my invitation is like in their, do they know it in the sense of their expressive vocabulary? Or do they just claim that they know it? Um, so that's what I would say about that. And maybe we could do some other assessment where you like, when kids think that they know the words, it'd be like, okay, well, show me then, right? At the beginning of a band, like, show me you know these words. Maybe there's like a little pre-assessment we could do. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe we do a pre-assessment. Anyway, <laughs> thinking out loud to myself. All right. And then, oh my goodness, I've talked about this one before. Uh, and this this other critique that I just disagree with and push back on is that this is teaching words in isolation and that that we shouldn't do that. And again, the words in isolation is doing a lot of the work here because again, it has that negative connotation that in isolation, right? <laughs> isolation usually don't use the word isolation in a positive manner, <laughs> right? Um, this idea that like, oh, you're teaching this one word and it's not transferring. And I say that's absolutely hogwash. The whole point of teaching and learning individual words is about transfer. It's what I just mentioned, transferring it into your speech, transferring it into your writing, into different situations and contexts using it figuratively and metaphorically, that is about transfer. There is nothing isolating. There is nothing in isolation about that. And again, I will push back. It's patently wrong. If you're learning words, quote unquote, in isolation or individual words, what that does is that gives you more knowledge. You have more conceptual knowledge. And the thing that we know about knowledge is the more you know, the more you can learn because the way that you learn is you connect it to previous things that you've learned. So this talk of teaching in isolation is just patently untrue. All right. So I think I've, I've spoken back to some of the critiques. And by the way, the critiques aren't like overwhelming. The overwhelming um, feedback is overwhelming, <laughs> being redundant here, is overwhelmingly positive. Nothing but joy, nothing but happiness and this has been great. And, you know, the, the critiques that happen are very light and they're very honest and they're very, um, they're good, but there are some that sort of like kind of get stuck in your maw and you want to speak to those a little bit because um, you might, yeah, I, I, I might disagree with them or I think that they're, they're false. And so I just want to speak to those. There, there's real minority of people, folks that, that, that might say this. And frankly, they're, they're people who aren't actually teaching word love. They're not familiar with it. They're not actually diving in and teaching it and seeing what joy it has. So, but if you have people who, you know, you may want to talk to about it and you have some messaging around it to talk, to talk it up and to speak against it. If, if you hear any of those messages that it's traditional, right? That it, half the kids know the words, that it's in isolation um, and so on. What was the fourth one here? that it was um it's, it has no community practice you know you, you now you have some things to speak back to anyhow i hope you're well i uh, hope you have a great holiday season and i intend to be back with more episodes of the read write mike podcast um, till then be well and i will see you later